Good morning, guys. We're having breakfast over here. Today we got what? A little can of uh, red salmon. We're gonna make some salmon croquettes. An egg. So the way I make my salmon croquettes, I just use the can of salmon, a little can like that, and uh, I just make them about hand size, and I put an egg in it. Can't use no flour. So guys, I want to talk to you about <clears throat> being healthy while you sleep. Sometimes you may sleep sideways on either side. And some people even mess around and fall asleep on their tummy. These are not healthy ways to sleep. I found out, the doctor says, the healthiest way for a person to sleep is just, that's a little salt, not much, is just to sleep on their back. Because I had been having a neck ache over here, and aches on my side, different sides of my body. Come to find out, your body isn't really resting if you're sleeping on your side and you're not sleeping on your back. When you sleep on your back, then your body has an even ability to rest because everything is resting. You know, you don't sleep like on your back with your legs kind of straight out. The way you sleep with your legs is you sleep on your back, completely on your back. You have your head straight like this. Don't have it to this side or that side because you want to rest your complete back. Have your head straight, and your legs should be kind of in a circle like this, like they're not, not straight out like you're, you're dead in a casket, but kind of soft like in a circle, like somebody just laid you on the bed. Your legs should be soft on like, like that, like a little bent, but not bent bit, but a little soft like, and you're laying on your back with your head anatomically straight. That's how you rest your complete body so that you're not achy when you wake up. Because imagine this, guys. You sleep on your side or on that side for seven or eight or nine or ten hours. When you wake up, you're going to be sore. Because for one, you're sleeping on your bones. All of your bones, you got little bones in your neck, little bones in your shoulders. You don't want to be sleeping on none of your bones. You want to be sleeping just flat on your back, your head straight, your legs kind of softly curled in a circle like that, not, not straight out like you're in a casket, but just kind of softly curled, and you sleep. That's the best way to sleep. Now, if somebody got a bad mattress, and when they sleep on their back, they feel like they're not all the way laying flat, you can slide a pillow right underneath this part right here to give you a little bit of curvature and then you still sleep on your back with your head straight and your arms, your legs sort of softly in a circle and you will sleep good. I slept two extra hours like that last night. I didn't even know I could do it, you know, because I'm not a back sleeper, I'm a side sleeper, but I've been having a lot of aches and pains in my neck over here, my neck, in my sides and so the doctor says you're not supposed to sleep on your side all night you're supposed to sleep on your back now i flipped my mattress i've done all of that but i was still having the pains so i said either i'm sleeping anatomically wrong or something is wrong you know had the muscle relaxer got the muscle relaxer so what i do with this is take about a spoon and put it in the skillet and let it cook Got the muscle relaxer, but I'm not going to get dependent on it. So what I said, I'm not going to take a muscle relaxer tonight because I know I was tired. You know, I worked the night before, but I hadn't went to sleep all day because I have to clean, you know. So I said, what I'm going to do is use castor oil. And whatever ache me, I rub it on there. My neck all up in here because I've been sleeping on my side. My back over here, my back over here. And then I even wet a towel with some castor oil and I 
put it inside my clothes up here, all on this back muscle. And then I laid flat on that and went to sleep. And guys, I'm feeling so much better. I'm not going to get that many out of this little can. Should have had two cans. I'm feeling so much better. I'm going to get about three out of this, which is cool. Because it's just a mini breakfast for us. Only two of us. If it was four, I would need at least two cans. But, um, you know, I'm feeling so much better. Sometimes when I make these, I even add, um, I add in tuna to stretch it. Now, this is beef fat from where I was making my burgers. What I do is I'm going to add in some beef fat instead of me using the corn oil fat. I don't have any butter right now. What I do is I keep this beef fat and I'll add it back into the skillet to help cook something. Say if you eat, cook some beef, if you don't let the food burn, you can keep that beef fat and use it as oil. Some people call it beef tallow. Use it as oil. So when you're going to buy beef tallow, all you buy is beef fat that comes off of your steaks and your burgers. But if now if the beef fat burns, you can't use it. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is cook us up some eggs. And then we're going to serve it all on a paper plate with a cup of coffee. We've already had another cup. A cup. We're going to have another cup. And I cook the whole egg when I cook it. And I just scramble them up. Throw them right on in there. You know, after I get the... Uh, Put the, the meat out, then I throw the eggs in. Now, another thing, guys, we're going to discuss today is going to be protein. Some people feel like I made an appointment yesterday to go get a uh, colonoscopy because I'm of the age to get that done. So I have to, the doctor said go get that done. So I'm not going to keep them eggshell because they're white. But some people feel like they constipated because they're eating beef, right? So I'm going to tell you something. You're not constipated. What happens when you eat beef? Sometimes all of your all of your meat, all of your processing of the beef is going to take longer. It's a longer process for protein than it is for carbs. Now, say for instance, you've got some peeling going on in your body. Maybe you've got some fat cells in your body. Uh, maybe you were doing some other things like drinking, smoking, or whatever. Your body is going to heal itself. So that's why it's important to drink a lot of water to help completely flush. And I told you to get you some of these, um, these here, these put in your water. Because sometimes people don't drink enough water. So what the uh, what those do, those little powder packs, the magnesium, sodium, and potassium, it's going to give you some extra hydration to the cells. Because a lot of us, we don't drink the amount of water that we should. Sometimes I think that we just don't have time to do it, or we forget. Whatever the case, get you some liquid uh, electrolyte powders of some kind keep going along with the water drinking so if you don't get in enough water drinking at least you have had your electrolyte powder you know to help help out a little bit in the cell now that's what i'm saying you're not constipated if you don't use the bathroom right away and you're eating protein your body is not going to break down your food like you're eating a carb now, when you eat a carb, you can drink coffee and go to the washroom because it's none of the sugar. It has no nutrient value. It does nothing for the cell. So you can eat it and run to the bathroom. Some people eat a carb and have diarrhea because there's no nutrients, no value there for that. When you eat protein, you're going to be going through something called protein synthesis. Now, the protein, it's going to lock into every cell of your body. And it's going to touch on your hormones. It's going to touch, it's going to go down through your pancreas. It's going to go down through every organ, your liver cell. It's going to go all the way down through your colon. But before you even get to the colon, it's going to go down through every area that it needs to touch and lock in to heal 
it makes up it's making the i'm telling you about the protein that's why i say protein the protein is building up muscle in you and every organ is you got over 600 muscles in your body every organ is a muscle so every muscle that need healing and protein said wait a minute I got to stop right here. I got to stop right here and make a deposit because it want to do protein synthesis in the liver, in the kidney. It want and, and while it's building up the muscle and you're not eating, you're fasting, right? You're fasting while this muscle is being built up. The fat say the, the, you need the carb. There's no carb if you're on a long fast. Now today we're going to start a fast which is going to start from 12 today until 7 p.m. Wednesday. This is 31 hours. So while you're fasting, so I'm going to have an early lunch today. While you're fasting and your body is building up on the inside, your body says, wait a minute, I have nothing to eat. I, I need some, I need some carb. You know, your main nutrient to run the body is carb, right? So you have nothing going around, nothing going, you ain't stuffing nothing in. The body said, okay, some fat over here. Let me eat a little bit of that. Because see, the fat cell is going to get broken down before the protein cell. Now, if you got a lot of fat on your body, a lot of fat, then you got a lot of breaking down to do. You can eat your protein. See, two salmon. I'm going to make a couple of eggs. You can eat your protein. Do your fast, and you're good. But I'm going to tell you about how the protein cell is working in your body. I'm going to do another video. Let me cook these eggs. I don't want this video to be long because I'm just trying to cook breakfast here. I'm going to tell you how protein synthesis is going along, and it's healing your hormones. It's healing all of those muscles that need healing. If you got some kidney issues, if you got liver, if you got heart the protein says let me let me get into that cell to do a little something over here it your, your body is not gonna excrete protein quickly it doesn't do that it's gonna take time it may take eight or it may take a whole day for the protein to come out as in excretion like you may eat something today and you may not use the washroom until tomorrow it may be that you need to go to sleep relax become de-stressed and sleep in a relaxed manner. Don't sleep all crypt up so that you're still asleep, but you're under stress because you're not sleeping anatomically aligned, which is just sleeping on your back with your head straight, you know, get you a little low pillow, a pillow that's not too high, you know, and let your legs just be soft like this. Stretch them out, but let them be soft in a circle so that I'm just sleeping here like I'm a baby. As though someone had just laid you down to sleep. You know, you know how the baby's sleeping, his, uh, his legs are sort of curled in like that. His legs are not straight out like that. That's something we do because we feel like we want to sleep in a stretched position. No, you stretch when you wake up. When you wake up, then you stretch out your legs because, hey, I'm up. I want to get a good stretch. The body is going to naturally do that for you. you. When you wake up, you naturally do all this, do all that. Because the body says, okay, I've been sleeping in this position all night. Now, not, not saying if you're used to sleeping on your side, you're going to probably turn on your side in your sleep. But somehow, if you have to wake up to go to the washroom, like me, I actually won't go to the washroom. I say, oh, it's feeling so good, I don't want to get up. I'll sleep a little bit longer, which is not good. I just turn back on my back because I have already gotten on my side. Because I'm used to my side. But sleeping on my side, on my mattress, is bad. Because now I'm flipping the mattress around from this side and that side because I need to replace it or either get a thick topper. You know, it's not a good mattress. So anyway, I'll talk to you later about protein synthesis. Have a good day.